question. Response, because I don't claim to have all the answers. So, you know, in obviously in SNL for, I think, since its entirety of being around, they've had actors, uh, especially more recently, famous actors, um, portray political figures, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Ever, um, I don't, for a long, long Alec time. Baldwin, yeah. Trump. Um, obviously, right now, um, uh, Dean Maya, Carvey did George yeah. Bush. He's doing uh, Biden right now. Which I is, saw it. Very funny. Uh, Maya Rudolph, obviously, is, is Kamala. Kamala. Um, and it's been around forever. Yeah. Uh, Will Ferrell did Bush back in the day, but um, not that I think they ever would. But if they did like an SNL in India, right? Um, what actor do you think could portray him? Um, a Modi is what I'm talking about in terms of just let's just say looks wise. Right. And they were trying to do a parody and make do a skit. My first hat. My first thought was Sanjay Mistra. I think they look kind of similar. Yeah. I mean, that's just like the obvious one in terms of just looks. Yeah. I think if you like pick like a big star. You know, I think Akshay could probably do a fun, not that he looks anything doesn't like. Look at anything. I know, but I think he could make a funny, he could do a funny job. He doesn't look anything in any <laughs> way like Modi. I know. <laughs> but Dana doesn't look like uh, uh, Biden. They just put they put the makeup on him. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? You think uh, off the top of your head? Just... No, I just, now I can't get Akshay out of my head. <laughs> Doing that. Akshay is Modi. Oh. That's, uh, it's going to be the... Uh, <laughs> it's it's going to heal the country. Yep. Uh uh, hey, welcome back to our statement. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, for more <laughs> juicy content. Thank you for your support on Patreon. Follow us on Instagram. Do other countries have stuff like that? That's a good question. I'm pretty I don't sure know. I'm don't pretty know. sure England does. That's a pretty common thing to do. I mean, Monty Python was doing that a long time ago. Well, I know but they, I don't know. They actually have like a um like a rule against that kind of like against like you can't say anything against the monarchy or Yeah, they won't do it the way we do it. Yeah, you can't like show Congress either. like John Oliver did stuff on him and they in England they cut it out. And yeah, we have the we have the capacity here. We straight up can Obviously. Mock mercilessly yeah. anybody. Anybody. And that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Um, I just wonder, obviously SNL is kind of my, its, own, its own thing. But. My favorite is when people come on, whether they're a politician or a celebrity or an actor, and they mock themselves. Yeah. That's the best. That's hilarious. So good. Cool. Uh, welcome back. Today we are doing a, this is a video that just came out a few days ago. It's called The Universe of Ani, Amazon Music. He kind of, it's a, a small little interview. Uh, it okay, kind of goes cool. over his kind of career and all those kind of stuff, uh, awesome. different kind of questions. Um, love Ani. I would love to talk would to, love Ani. to talk to Ani. So we have the universe of Anirudh. <laughs> what is it ruled by? Chaos, chance, or precision? Chaos, chance, or precision? That's a good question. Chaos. <laughs> uh, I think it's a producer and director's nightmare, but you know, it's worked for us till now, and I hope it works in the future as well. <laughs> That's your, a, that was a good question. What's yours run by? Oh, stupidity. Hi, this is Arnie and this is Horniness. my universe on Amazon Music. Whoa. My ears are vibrating. What's the first sound you remember that you heard? I can tell when you that, kid, me. You know, I can't. like I can't. all parents get their kids the toy keyboard, right? So you just like keep tapping on that. So I think it was watching Yani and live at the Taj Mahal on TV. I still remember that uh, sight actually. I still remember the TV. I still remember Yani was wearing a white shirt, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it was just a visual and audio spectacle, which kind of made me try to like play whatever he's playing back on this toy keyboard. That's my first memory of me being interested in music per se. Uh, and I started trying to make my own music very early also. I started in 6th, 7th standard. Like obviously you, you start doing something and you realize that there's so much to it and you have to learn so much. So it was a big process actually. To be very honest, I still use a couple of tunes which I made then in my <laughs> in my films now, you know, when there's a deadline or you know, there's no ideas are coming to you, then you're like, why don't you open the bank from 2002 or 2003? <laughs> Obviously, the production of it is going to be ancient, but you never know, you may get like some line or some melody line from that which you can actually use. I had a deal with my folks that I was going to do undergraduation in India and give music a shot for three years. So if that doesn't work, then I was going to go and pursue my studies uh, abroad and, you know, be in finance or whatever. Uh, so that was the whole deal that we had. So for me to 
succeed in this deal i had to like move fast right most of the directors i work with right now they all have my uh, demo series mm. and some of them actually even remember like for example like shankar sir knows that i've used couple of those songs in, from my demo series in other films so like i've heard that before but <laughs> this is what came in this, that film yeah so i did i i i did those rounds luckily what happened was by at the same time i was working on short films so one of the short films i was working on became my first film because when i was in second year of under graduation is when i started working on my first film 3 and when i was just finishing under graduation it released so just, just in, in time. time yeah with respect to our first song which was colaverity uh to be very honest that was like a total accident because uh, i think everybody knows the story a bad version of it like a wrong version of it leaked everything happened too fast too many things happened like i went up to the prime minister of the country you know <laughs> they like what <laughs> is this and with with every every day it just kept going crazier and crazier and for like 6 months during that time we were just going all over the world just singing that one song <laughs> it's too <laughs> so much for us to take then we didn't know how to react so when the film didn't do well 6 months from then is when we realized that actually all this is just in the air you know it's about what you do after this look at those faces who he's worked with every song actually that we run a litmus test like we just ask like random people i never call the director and ask him what did you like the song or what what did the backup dancer say about the song mm. <laughs> you know is did the backup dancer like this song then i would call film distribution guys i would call one of those guys and ask them they'll have one certain perspective of you know what works and what doesn't right from day one what we realized that we are not going to try to do something revolutionary in music or you know it's just about i love popular music how am i going to make my music relatable to the layman is what i actually that's what actually drives i also like to update myself as to what the world is listening to and also we have like in the studio we have one little game which goes on between us as to who get, who takes a hunch as to what is going to be the next big genre so we also kind of practice that genre as to how to make it before it actually hits the market here right like if i wanted to be a music director these 12 13 years have been the best time and it's just going to get better i feel because like the advent of social media streaming and everything becoming you know uh, streamlined it's just made things so much easier for us like before it would take a while for it to reach you know other people but now it just reaches within the within a second right and with all the social media that has come now and all the streaming that has come the language doesn't matter at all how you utilize that to your maximum potential is what kind of defines you so that's what we are also uh, trying to do with respect to wait and first thanks to everyone because the first song has just come and obviously everybody is liking it so thanks for that and why we want to do the ai is because see with rajni sir what happens is because this is 50th year i think in uh, in cinema this is his 50th year of acting he came up with the idea let's try uh malaysia was in who sang a lot of his party songs back in the 70s mm. and 80s that that sounded like a new and fresh idea to me so when he told me that i asked his son who i knew who's also a singer so he sang that portion like his father and gave it to me oh nice then through ai we changed that to his father's voice now we have a telugu film releasing on 27th and wait in is 10th i think for pongal will be uh, ajit's film which is vida muyarchi Yeah, this coolie, and then Shah Rukh Khan's film in Hindi. As of now, this is already giving me a headache to mention <laughs> all this. That's it. That's it. That's, that's all. There are more. There are more, but I don't want to mention it because then I'll get psyched for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Just working there with Raj Khan, Shah Rukh Khan. Good luck. Hear that? He said I got 50 songs to do in the next 10 months. I hope months. you guys enjoyed listening to all these fun stories. and a quick tour around my universe. Do you think you could do 50 songs in a year? In a year? Or if, 10 months, sorry, whatever you yeah, said. Yeah. I if if someone said to me, "Here, I'm going to pay you to do 50 songs in 10 months." And so the economy was taken care of and I put everything else on hold. Yes.
Mm. Yes. But other than that, no. Do you hear, Ani? Now, here's the question. Do you hear it, Ani? You're not special. The question is not whether or not I could write the 50 songs in 10 months. The question is, would they be any good? Because it's one thing to get quantity out. Mm -hmm. Whole other animal for quality. And the biggest challenge, I know he's got a team. But I, I'm so picky if I write something. It has to be pretty much serendipitous. The thought of having to sit down and write a song because I've been told to. Mm -hmm. No. No. That's uh, if it's if it doesn't like I was walking, <laughs> I was just walking to Taco Bell mm. and I was in a particular mood and the song came in my head mm. about walking to Taco Bell, walking to Taco Bell dun, 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 that went through my head and suddenly I started recording it into the phone and I did a couple of layers of it and I had a full blown song just walking to Taco Bell and back. But that's the way songwriting happens for me. The thought of having, if someone came to me and said, you got to write a jingle for Taco Bell, they want to incorporate walking, I'd, I'd be like, I would probably hate everything I try to do. So add to that, Shah Rukh Khan wants this song. Rajnikanth needs this song. Yogi Babu yeah. needs this song. So that level of output and the requirement for the quality to be as good as it gets but that's I, a whole other league. I imagine he's like whole other league. A.R. Rahman in terms of yeah, and, and Prabhu in terms of like his creative button just doesn't turn off. I agree. I'd love to know. One of the questions I'd want to ask him is, have you ever been so under the gun that you had to get the song out and you actually didn't like the song, I'm sure. but you got the song out. But deep down, you're like, damn, that was crap. Probably not. That's that was like asking Aaron Ramon if he ever has writer block. He was like, "What's that?" Or asking Prabhu, "Do you ever have problems cor doing choreography?" What's that? I, I, it's like a lot of songwriters and and choreographers have a notepad by their table because they can't shut it off. Yeah, and so they've got to be constantly writing down what they're hearing. Yeah, yeah, that happens to me. Like it's like lightning for me. I'll go through a dry spell for months, and all of a sudden, one day, boom, there's three songs, and then five years go by. It's really, I can't comprehend nonstop torrent of songwriting. Boggles the mind. I can. I've written. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've written. <laughs> I've written. <laughs> and the other thing is his capacity to write. I mean, I've written different genres of stuff like i've written stuff that falls into techno pop and country and but i'm predominantly a balladeer i'm predominantly like my favorite things to write would fall under the like the billy joel or paul mccartney kind of stuff to write the ex not just the amount of stuff he does but he can write like a.r Rahman. pick a genre any genre i'll i'll write it for you well i'm excited for all the stuff he's doing coming out i am too he's I love such a him. talent he's he yeah, I really, him. really talented. I write as well. So if you ever need a writing partner, just let me know, honey. And come and help you with your music. I just require sixty percent. Sorry. Don't ask what I do. Though. The thing I the one last thing that I, it's so strange. I hear it a lot, but um, you know, I'm gonna give it three years. If it doesn't work out, I'm done. Imagine if his number was four years and he had stopped at three. Yeah, it's that. and how many have done that? Obviously, it's a very common thing, especially in Asian cultures, in terms of you just have to please your parents. And yeah, well, how many? They're being nice enough to let you do it for three years. How many Anis are out exactly, there that's... that stopped at year two? Yeah, millions, <sighs> millions. Unfortunately. Anyways, fantastic. If there's other Ani songs, uh, let us know what they are, and anything else we need to know down below. Just. <laughs>